Right, sure. Check out QSports.club, the new home of snooker. Hi snooker fans, Curtis Braithwaite here for QSports.club. I'm here at Whetstone Snooker Club for a Q&A session with former ranking event finalists and one of the smoothest guys on the tour, Adita Mehta. Adita, how are you mate? Very good, really excited to be back. Uh, it's been a long time, I've been away for about eight months with a uh, neck injury and uh, I've been suffering with it for two years so I'm glad to finally be fit enough uh, to be back here and uh, just get started again. It's a fresh start for me and I'm looking forward to it. Great stuff and I see you've got a new sponsor at the moment, haven't you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge for me right now in, a, in the situation that I am in uh, coming back uh, and having to start from scratch and financial support as all snooker players know is absolutely massive. So rkgsnooker.com is my new sponsor and uh, you know I just I can't thank him enough for, for believing in me and trusting in me um, along with all, all the other support that I have back in India. Great stuff and Adi, I can say as one of your fans mate it's tremendous to have you back mate. Tremendous to have you back. You. Right, now tell us Adi, how it started for you in the beginning. What made you take up snooker? Uh, I've always been into sports. It was my dad obviously he used to play a lot of different sports and ever since school he always uh, you know tried to put me into different sports to see what I would you know, enjoy. I played football for seven, eight years for school and cricket, badminton, uh, golf, which is one of my favorites, and snooker. And somehow snooker seemed to stick. I guess <laughs> it just sort of matched my personality. You know, yeah. I'm a very sort of quiet person. I keep to myself. Yeah. Um, and I like being in in the snooker room and just uh, you know, just the environment of it is something that stuck. And I did well at it when I was a kid. So I guess I, I wanted to see how good I how, how good I could be. Great stuff. Now to date, who's had the most influence on your career? I'd, I'd have to say my family, because uh, you know, for all players coming from, from foreign uh, countries, it's never easy uh, to settle in the UK and to be in, playing on the professional tour. So the fact that my parents and my sisters and all my cousins, ever since I was a kid, the fact that they you know, believed in me and, and had my back for, for so many years, and even now at this difficult situation, for them to just say, you know what, you forget everything else and you just do your best. I can't think of a, a better sort of support team and uh, they've got to be the most influential. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Now, like I said earlier on, it was great to, great to have you back and uh, we're all looking forward to, you, to see you perform this season. But what are your goals for the coming season? Uh, starting all the way from the bottom, it's going to be difficult uh, playing against, uh, obviously, top 64s in every first round, I guess, uh, you know, having, not having the seeding. It's going to be hard, but uh, I believe that the, the stage that I had reached, the top 50 in the world, is something that's definitely in, in my uh, reach. And uh, it might take a while, but the first, first target is to beat my previous best, and that's to get back into that top 50. It might not be in one season, but you know I've got two seasons now, uh, getting that tour card from the Euro Tour. So I'm looking at two seasons, uh, to be honest, and I just want to get back to at least what I was in 2013 and uh, 12 and 13 where I think I played my best stuff. Yeah, yeah, correct. And I'm sure with your injuries behind you now, new sponsor and whatnot, you'll be well on the way to doing that over the next 18 months. Now, Adi, what cue do you currently use? I've just got a new one. Uh, I'm using uh, Omen and uh, it's only been a few months, so I'm still sort of getting used to it, but I'm really enjoying having that cue. Uh, I played with Stamford for a long time, um, but currently I'm going for the Omen and hopefully It'll be the queue for the next few years at least. Okay, and what tip do you currently use? Another one, something new I've tried. Uh, I was on the Phoenix uh, mediums before and I just put on a tip called Mui. Okay. I don't think many people have used it, um, but it seems, uh, it seems to be pretty nice right now. Okay, now you've had a fair bit of success as an amateur and uh, a little bit as a pro as well, but you're still quite early in your career. But uh, what's your most memorable match in your career to date? I think, I mean, um, tournaments and matches I guess would be different but uh, one of the matches that I'll never forget is is I would think it was in 2011 against uh, Stephen Maguire in one of the PTCs when I was still an amateur and um, I beat him 4-0 in that one and uh, for the first three frames he, he didn't score a point as well and I remember after the match uh, just talking to Stephen because he's just an amazing guy I've, I've, I've had great matches with him and in fact, I think a lot of my great memories come against Stephen Maguire. Even yeah. my maximum in Germany was against Stephen Maguire. So oh. I think uh, I have fond memories of Stephen. And uh, that match, uh, you know, winning 4-0 against Stephen at that stage in my career was, was huge for me. Okay, yeah, he's a great guy, Stephen, isn't he? Tremendous guy. 
Sorry to watch you this one, mate. It's a bit of a sore one, but what's your most painful defeat? I've been thinking about that for, for a while now. Um, <laughs> I just I can't seem to put my finger on one, but I'd say one of the one of the big matches I had, uh, probably in 2012 against uh, Alan McManus at the World Qualifiers. It was a second round, um, and it went to about nine and a half hours. Wow. And I lost to him 10-9 on the pink. And... I remember that hurting so much that I refused to get out of my chair when it was over <laughs> because I was just in my chair thinking, how have I lost this one? You know, uh, it was an amazing match. 9-7 down, coming back to 9 each and making a 57 in the decider. And I missed the last color um, to get on the yellow. And he cleared up from there. So that hurt a lot. Although, I'd be honest, I've had a lot of painful memories, uh, as all snooker players do. Yeah. So, uh, but that's the one that uh, really comes to mind right now. Well, just say, taking a negative back to a positive, I suppose you learn the most from your toughest defeats, don't you? So, uh, one to learn from for the future. Right, now, what's your best personal achievement in snooker to date? It's got to be the Indian Open uh, final. It, it's close between the World Games gold, which was a very emotional thing for me. But I think as far as, you know, level of event and the, the magnitude of the event, the Indian Open was my first ranking event final in 2013. And that was the first Indian Open. So... Uh, for the country and for me personally, uh, it was huge. So that's got to be um, the, one of the best memories of my life. Okay, now Aditya, you're a very quiet guy. Like we said at the beginning of the interview, you'd like to keep yourself to yourself. Uh, sometimes I see you just see music in your ears, going along, going along like you're in your own world. But tell us who your best friend on tour is. I've, I've got to know so many people around here. You know, I've moved around a lot. I was in Sheffield for six years, then um, in London, then in Leicester now back in London, uh, but I've got to say recently I, I get along really well with the other two guys here, Alfie and uh, Anthony, and I think that uh, we always have good banter, good good fun at tournaments whenever we can. You know, Anthony looks like a very serious guy, but I tell you, he's one of the funniest uh, people I've never known. So, uh, you know, I think for now, Alfie, obviously I've known him a bit longer, and he's been such a huge help and support over the last few years, when even when I was amateur and then helping me to come to Whetstone. So I think it's got to be the two guys here right now who uh, you know I get along best with, but I, I think there's such a great bunch of people on this tour that uh, you know I, I can't start naming people now yeah, yeah. too long. I fully agree. Anthony and Alfie are two top, top guys. And to be fair, it's a great setup you've got here. Like with Whetstone Snooker Club, brilliant club, Ali the owner, top man, Hassan, a lot of great guys here. So you've really got a good base to play it off and, and all the best with that. Yeah. So it's it's really great uh, that they took me back in after a, a break. You know, it's never easy in clubs. It's it, it, they have to you know do business as well. But the fact that uh, he's devoting three three of his tables to us, three professionals, uh, it's it's fantastic. And he's just a great guy, Ali. So I'm glad that uh, I could be back here. Yeah, top man, Ali. Now, Dee, what's your favorite food? Well, since we do travel a lot and uh, move around a lot, I, I seem to enjoy a lot of international cuisine, but I guess uh, the two I would name would be Mexican and Thai. I really like uh, both, both cuisines and, and I, I do cook as well, so I enjoy cooking them as well. Okay, great stuff. Yep, yeah, I'm definitely a fan of a burrito for sure. Definitely yeah. me. But hey, that shows on me anyway. That shows. And your favourite drink? Uh... Are we going alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Oh, it's up to you, mate. Whatever's, whatever's more comfortable I'm, for you. I'm a, I'm a beer person. I really love beer. And that's why I love all these uh, uh, going away to European events and, and getting some really good uh, brews. Uh, Great it's stuff. It's always, always beer. Okay, now you've played at most of the venues. Uh, not played at the Crucible yet, but as one of your fans, I think it won't be long before you are at the Crucible because you're definitely good enough. But what's your favourite venue to play at so far? I, always, I just have great memories of, uh, of Firth. Paul under Classic. For some reason, I just think that the fans there are just amazing, and uh, you know, even I've even played at the the Tempodrome, and uh, it's just Germany has always been special. Although I think right now we've got so many great events, but my favorite has to be Firth. Uh, also, obviously, the fact that I I made my only career. 147 there is, is a huge uh, part in that. Yeah, one memory is a Yeah, it's uh, just back to the German thing a minute. I mean, I've got to agree with you there. The Temper Drum is amazing supporting there. I mean, every single day it's jam packed. A uh, really knowledgeable crowd as well. It's a tremendous place to play snooker. And also, like you said, the Paul Hunter Classic in Firth is a tremendous place to play as well. 
So I fully agree, fully agree. Now you guys don't get much chance to relax away from the table with so much, so many tournaments, uh, tough, tough schedule. But when you actually get a chance to relax, where do you like to do so? I'm. Um, like we said in the beginning, I like to keep it myself most of the time. So for me, it's usually anywhere that I can sit with a book and maybe watch some films. And so the fact that we do travel that much, yeah. it means that when you're when you're home or where when I'm in London, I prefer to be in. So I, I like to stay in and just do get catch up on the reading. And um, I'm not too much of an outdoors person. Yeah. So I'd say if I wasn't playing, uh, you'd mostly find me at home with a book. Okay. Okay, good stuff. I know you're into your music, so tell us your favourite music you like to listen to. I'm uh, a bit into alternative and uh, you know, a bit of pop, but uh, <laughs> I, house, dance, that kind of thing. And uh, I'd say I, I like, I really like Coldplay, so I listen to a lot of uh, of their music. Yeah, yeah. And just a lot of like uh, dance and top forty stuff. I'm not, I'm not that knowledgeable about uh, music. I just, if I like the tune then I like that song. It's as simple as that. Yeah, great stuff. Now, who was your sporting hero when you were growing up? Ah, this is another tough one. I've, uh, I've, never, I've never really looked at one specific sports person and sort of, you know, tried to emulate them or, or to learn from them. It's, I just love sport and I've, I've uh, tried my hand at so many different sports. Um, I just can't think of, uh, of any one sports person that really... Uh, jumps out at me you know of course now with the Olympics going on right now yeah. you just see so many legends you see Usain Bolt and, and Michael Phelps things like that just inspirational and as well as so many other sports people I just believe that there's something to learn from everyone yeah and absolutely I, I like to see the good in in others and and make it make it uh, part of me so you know a lot of different people and put it together and do the best that I can yeah great answer great answer the last question Adita if you could run world snooker, what changes would you make and why? That's, um, I've never, I've never really thought of it. I know a lot of people have a lot of um, input on those kind of things, but uh, for me, I'm not, I'm not somebody who gets too much into into the in, into that nitty gritty, like that kind of uh, that part of snooker. For me, I, I just, um, I just hope that they, they see. Um, what all the players are saying and uh, that all of us want the best for the game and whatever they do decide that you have to make the most of it um, there's there's always going to be you know things that don't go down well with everyone um, we all obviously look at our personal interests as well so let's look at the interest of the game and whatever helps run the game in a way that brings out the best in of the sport in the world and makes us grow. As long as we're growing, yeah. I think that the Federation is, is doing a good job. And you know, we have seen in the last five years where snook has come from, from nothing. Uh, yeah. So let's just, I think, get behind uh, World Snooker and, and support their decisions, even if it means that it's not the best for us, uh, but as long as it's good for the game. Great answer, great answer. Godita, it's been fantastic talking to you. And once again, as one of your fans, and I think all of us at QSports.club want to wish you the very, very best of the season, and welcome back. Thank you very much. It's great to be back. Top man.